another lesson in Swift for beginners. We will be picking up right where we left off, and in today's lesson, we're going to be discussing type aliases. So let's get started by getting rid of everything that we had here from the last lesson. And let's give this a title of type alias. So I wanted to explain what a type alias was and uh, more importantly, why it's uh, so useful and why it's heavily used in professional uh, code bases and in industry. So a type alias is um, a way to give another name to a given type. So let's say we have a code um, variable and it's of type string and that's what it points to. But let's say we are passing this around as a parameter in a function um, called, let's say, validate code, and we have a code and this. So in this case, this kind of makes sense, right? We can just do validate and we can pass in the code. And this is pretty easy to read. Now, what if we wanted to make this string say code instead? So let me show you what that means. So you can actually do something like this. You can say type alias code is a string. And here we can say code and code. So what we've essentially done is we've created our own type. And we've said the new type that we're creating is called code and it's a string. Now what the heck is the use usefulness and point of this? because it seems like you're just renaming the string to code. Um, and before we get into that, I want you to understand that this string still exists. You can still use it. You just created another usage of it. So the reason this exists is for more complex um, types that might be a little more confusing to follow. So let's say we have a, so we went over dictionaries. Let's say we have a dictionary that's going to represent somebody's home address where the key might be like street, city, state, country, and the value might be respectively uh, the values for street, city, state. So let's say New York, New York, United States, right? So how would, how would that look? Let's say we have address and the type would be um, a string to a string in a dictionary. And let's just leave it empty for now, but just to prove the point. Now, if we have a function here called valid address and we pass in this address and we need to say this is the type. Now this type is a little less pretty than just having one thing be a string. So how do we resolve this? Now what we can do is make a type alias and say, an address is a string to a string. And then here, we can say, this is an address. So this is an example of a type used to simplify the underlying type. So the type alias that we've created is the address. The underlying type is a dictionary of a string key to a string value. But now we can just say, this parameter type is an address because under the hood, we've specified what address is. Um, so let's do one more example in, in a, uh, that's used commonly. So we talked about closures. And let's say we have a closure that takes in a promo code and validates it um, with some, some network call. So for example, let's say you have a coupon code and you want to en enter it into the app, but your app wants to check if it's valid. So you might have, let's say, a validate function and its type is going to be taking in a string whoops so we want this to take in a string and return a bool let's make it optional and let's say we have another function called um, did enter code which has a code. Now in here, what we can do is if this actually had something assigned to it, we can do something like 
And then in here we can pass in the code. And the result of this would be uh, true or false. Now, what if we wanted to make this whole thing look a little nicer? Because this is this is a little tough to follow. So what I mean by that is if a new developer engineer comes into the code base, they're going to look at this and be like, okay, there's this variable called uh, validate function, and it's a string and it returns a, it ha takes a string and it returns a bool. Okay, it's also optional, but maybe this isn't as cognizant of what this is actually doing. So there's a better way to do this. And the better way to do this is using a type alias. So what we can do is we can take this whole thing and we can create a type alias up here and we can say promo code validation function is that type and then we can say this is that. So this is a much more cleaner and prettier way to write it and this is how it's actually done uh, a lot in professional code bases. Um, this type is a alias, a, basically a alias that points to this type, but using this to declare the type of this validate function is a lot cleaner than using this. So one reason we do this is for readability's point, readability, readability sake. And the other reason we do this is let's say we have multiple, um, functions or multiple variables, closures in this case that need this type, it's a lot easier and more clean to use this type that we've created in the, in the type alias rather than this type. We can see here very clearly that the point of this closure is, firstly, we can see that it will be a closure because of the type's name. It's, it's going to be some type of promo code validate function. Then we can also see kind of the point of the function that should be assigned to this. Um, and the usage of it. Now, the other cool thing is um, in, in a larger code base, if you didn't know what the signature of this function was, in other words, what parameter types it took and what it returned, you can hold command and you can click into this and then hit jump to definition and it'll actually highlight in the code wherever that type alias is defined. And um, that goes for different files too. So in our example, we're in just one file, but if you have thousands of files, you can command click into it and then hit this and it'll jump to where it is and it'll show you exactly. Um, and lastly, before we end this lesson, I wanted to mention generally the type alias is created right above the code that uses it. So in this case, we have this variable that is using this type and we've put the type alias right above it. So that's generally a good way to do it to keep things organized um, and just for the sake of easily following where the heck this type alias came from. So I hope that clarified what a type alias is and why it's useful. Um, and again, I'm, I just wanted to stress it's used pretty heavily, so I would, I would understand it and become comfortable with it. Um, yeah, I hope you guys found this informative. Leave a like, follow, subscribe, uh, comment for any questions or clarity, and I will see you guys in the next lesson. Oh, 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 oh,